Unitree has released a new H2 humanoid robot demonstration, and it has left a lot of people uneasy. At first glance, the footage looks like a catastrophic mistake. During a live demo, the H2 appears to launch a powerful kick straight toward the head of its own CEO. For a split second, it feels like you're watching something spiral out of control. But once you understand what's really happening, the moment becomes far more unsettling. Some viewers are already calling it the closest thing we've seen to a real-world Terminator. Hey everyone, welcome back to the AI Nexus. This week, humanoid robotics crosses into a much more dangerous phase. Let's begin. The demonstration opens with something that feels more like a stunt from an action film than a robotics showcase. The H2 executes a flying front kick with speed and balance that doesn't look mechanical at all. Then the tone shifts. The robot repeats the same move, but this time, the target is human. Standing directly in front of the robot is Unitree's founder and CEO, Wang Xingxing. He doesn't flinch as the H2 launches its 154-pound machine. Frame into the air, its foot stops just short of his face. The distance is razor thin. Wang's expression says everything. This is someone who understands exactly how much force that leg can produce. If the system had been even slightly off, the outcome could have been catastrophic. This moment wasn't designed for shock value. It was a calculated display of accuracy. For a humanoid robot to jump, extend a limb toward a human head, and stop with that level of precision requires extreme control, rapid computation, and incredibly responsive actuators. But precision alone isn't the headline here. The demo quickly proves how much destructive power sits behind that control. The H2 transitions into a spinning jump hook kick, rotating fully in midair. This time, the target is a watermelon. The result is instant and violent. The fruit doesn't crack, it explodes. That single strike demonstrates how much rotational force the robot can generate while staying perfectly balanced. Things escalate further when the test shifts to raw impact strength. Engineers place a 66-pound sandbag, about 30 kilograms, in front of the robot. One kick sends it swinging effortlessly through the air. They replace it with a heavier, 132-pound bag, about 60 kilograms, roughly the weight of a small adult. The H2 strikes again, and the bag flies just as easily. Online reactions didn't take long. Comment sections are already describing this stage as the Terminator era, with viewers pointing out that a strike like this could be fatal to a human. The hardware explains why. The H2's knee joints alone output around 360 newton meters of torque. All of that power is packed into a humanoid frame weighing just 154 pound frame, about 70 kilograms. And Unitree isn't alone in pushing humanoid strength beyond human limits. Engine AI recently released footage that put an end to accusations that their earlier demonstrations were staged. In the video, their T-800 humanoid delivers a strike so powerful that it physically lifts the company's CEO off the ground. Before we continue, if you want grounded, no-hype updates on humanoid robots and AI, make sure you're subscribed to the AI Nexus. We focus on what actually matters. In Engine AI's test, CEO Zhao Tongyang wears full protective equipment and braces behind a padded shield. He stands directly in front of the T-800. The robot locks onto the target, adjusts its stance, and then fires a kick with explosive force. The impact launches Zhao backward across the mat. This wasn't a shove or a loss of balance. It was a deliberate, engineered strike. The T-800's leg actuators are rated at roughly 450 newton meters of torque, surpassing even the H2. What stands out even more than the hit is what happens afterward. The T-800 doesn't stumble. It doesn't tip or struggle to recover. Its balance system compensates almost instantly. Gyroscopic sensors and real-time feedback loops shift its center of mass in milliseconds. While Unitree positions the H2 as an interaction-focused service platform under its destiny awakening vision, Engine AI is clearly optimizing for brute durability. The T-800 is being prepared for a competitive robot boxer event where humanoids will physically spar against each other. 
This is no longer the age of robots falling over from minor contact. These machines can absorb force and return it with even greater intensity. But power and precision don't guarantee safety. Sometimes, the very systems that make these robots feel human are the same ones that cause serious problems. That brings us to a viral incident involving Unitree's smaller humanoid, the G1. The G1 is designed as a lower-cost platform for AI training and research. It's best known for its martial arts-style demonstrations. But one training session gained attention for an entirely different reason. The G1 uses real-time motion imitation. An engineer wears a motion capture setup, and the robot mirrors every movement instantly. It's an effective method for teaching balance and coordination. During one session, the engineer demonstrates a simple front kick. He lifts his leg and kicks forward. The robot copies the motion perfectly. The issue was positioning. Both the engineer and the robot were facing the same direction, with the G1 standing directly behind him. When the kick was executed, the robot's leg followed through, straight into the engineer's groin. He dropped to the floor immediately, but the situation became even stranger. Still operating in mirror mode, the G1 observed the engineer doubling over in pain and collapsing. It instantly mimicked that reaction, bending forward and falling in the same way, as if reacting to pain itself. The clip spread rapidly online. While many found it funny, it exposed a serious reality. The robot didn't malfunction. It performed exactly as trained. Its motion accuracy was so high that it delivered a flawless strike to an unintended target. This is the real danger of high-performance humanoids. When machines move at human speed with mechanical strength, even a small oversight in training logic can lead to injury. This is why Unitree's H2 demonstrations matter so much. The focus isn't just teaching movement. It's teaching spatial awareness, distance, and human presence. When you step back and look at the H2, the T-800, and the G-1 together, a clear pattern emerges. Humanoid training has fundamentally changed. Older robots relied on rigid, pre-programmed joint paths. Movement looked artificial and fragile. Today's systems rely on reinforcement learning and human-guided feedback loops. The H2's quasi-serial mechanical design places heavier motors higher in the legs, reducing inertia in the lower limbs. That allows faster, more natural motion. Combined with the flexion-abduction rotation hip structure, the platform becomes far easier for AI systems to train effectively. But these advances also reveal what's still missing. As the G1 incident shows, humanoid robots don't yet understand context or social boundaries. They execute instructions perfectly, even when perfection leads to dangerous outcomes. The intelligence layer is still catching up. The hardware is already strong enough for the real world. The software, however, is still learning how humans actually live in it. And this is only the beginning. Forget everything you knew. CES 2026 just proved the robot revolution is officially here. Realbotics unveiled a humanoid so lifelike, it actually solves the uncanny valley. Engine AI's T-800 proved that robots can now jump and sprint like pro athletes. Tombot introduced Jenny the robotic pup designed for pure emotional comfort. From rollable laptops to AI-powered sneaker cleaners and L'Oreal AI face masks, it was a wild show. Realbotics introduced David Bot, a male humanoid designed to push realism far beyond previous demos. David Bot uses advanced facial animation systems that sync speech with micro-expressions. When the robot smiles, muscles around the eyes react naturally. When it pauses, the face settles instead of freezing. This solves one of robotics' biggest problems, the uncanny valley. Built on the Ask Aria platform, the system adjusts tone and expression based on detected emotion. It is positioned for entertainment, hospitality, and customer-facing roles. The result feels less like a machine responding and more like a presence reacting in real time. If realism was one extreme, Raw physical ability was the other. Engine AI showcased two humanoids that focus entirely on motion and strength. The PM01 is a lightweight embodied agent designed for real-world environments like malls, stations, 
and guided tours. Movement is smooth, controlled, and practical. Then comes the T-800. This full-scale humanoid delivers up to 450 Newton meter of torque per joint and 14,000 watts of instantaneous power. That level of force allows sprinting, jumping, and combat-style movement. Instead of slow mechanical steps, the T-800 moves like a trained athlete. This shift marks a move away from staged concepts and toward robots built for factories, emergency response, and physical labor. Not every robot at CES was built for power or speed. Some were designed for comfort. Tombot presented Jenny, a robotic companion created for seniors with dementia and individuals dealing with anxiety. Jenny uses nine servo motors to control subtle movements, ears, head tilt, eyebrows, and tail. The design was developed with Jim Henson's Creature Shop, giving it lifelike motion instead of rigid animation. Capacitive touch sensors allow the robot to respond when petted or held. When interaction stops, Jenny reacts with gentle movement to re-engage. Priced around $1,500, it replaces neither therapy nor care, but offers emotional presence for people unable to maintain a real pet. Displays took a major leap forward with Lenovo's ThinkPad Rollable XD. At first glance, it looks like a standard 13.3-inch laptop. Then the screen expands upward into a full 16-inch vertical workspace. The rollable panel is powered by dual motors and steel cable support to keep the display flat and rigid. Unlike earlier concepts, there's no warping or distortion. Part of the screen wraps around the exterior when closed, enabling a world-facing display for notifications or schedules. This design removes the need for external monitors while keeping the device travel-friendly. It's a practical evolution of foldables, focused on productivity rather than spectacle. CES always delivers unexpected products. One of the most talked about was the Brolon Clear X, an AI-powered shoe cleaning system. Shoes are scanned internally to identify material types like leather, suede, or mesh. Based on that data, the system selects a cleaning and drying cycle automatically. The core technology uses micro nano bubbles, which penetrate fabric without soaking it. This removes dirt while preserving structure and glue. With an estimated price between $500 and $800, it targets collectors rather than casual users. For sneaker preservation, it may solve a problem most didn't know could be automated. Behind many of these machines is one key player, Qualcomm. At CES, the company unveiled the Dragon Wing IQ10 chip, built specifically for physical AI systems. The chip features an 18-core Orion CPU and delivers 700 tops of AI performance. That's more than 10 times the power of most AI laptops. It supports up to 20 simultaneous camera inputs, allowing robots to see, reason, and act in real time. Qualcomm pairs this with a visual language action model, meaning robots understand what objects are and how they should be handled. This architecture is designed to move robotics out of labs and into everyday environments. Personal flight returned in a serious way with the Air EV. Unlike air taxi concepts, this electric vertical takeoff and landing is designed for private ownership. The aircraft uses a fly-by-wire system where onboard computers manage stability while the pilot controls direction. It reaches speeds of 155 miles per hour with a range of 110 miles. For the 2026 version, blade geometry was redesigned to reduce noise, one of the biggest barriers to personal aircraft adoption. Instead of futuristic visuals, Air One focuses on usability and garage-scale storage. It positions personal flight as a lifestyle tool, not a science experiment. If Air One is a flying car, the Richtor X4 is closer to a flying dirt bike. Built for solo pilots, it uses a multi-rotor design with an open field of view. The standout feature is autonomous obstacle avoidance. Using LiDAR and ultrasonic sensors, the system detects trees, cables, and terrain in real time. Takeoff and landing are fully AI-assisted, lowering the barrier for new pilots. Battery density improvements pushed flight time to 30 minutes, 
a notable jump from earlier versions. The X4 represents a shift from proving flight is possible to proving it can be safe and accessible. Minimalism took an extreme form with the HP Elite Board G1A. There is no separate PC. The keyboard is the computer. Inside its 0.7-inch chassis sits an AMD Ryzen AI 300 series processor, cooling system, speakers, and microphones. It qualifies as a Copilot Plus PC with a dedicated NPU for AI workloads. Weighing under 1.5 pounds, it connects to any display via USB-C. The internal design is modular, allowing RAM and storage upgrades. This concept brings back the spirit of early home computers, updated for cloud workflows and AI-driven productivity. Wearables also received a major AI upgrade. Lenovo previewed Kyra, lightweight AI-powered glasses weighing just 45 grams. The system delivers near-instant live translation and contextual summaries of missed notifications, all without heavy hardware. For younger users, the Luca AI Cube targets Gen Alpha. The Cube uses multimodal AI to identify objects and explain them through stories and facts. Instead of screen-based interaction, it encourages real-world exploration. These devices show AI moving away from apps and toward ambient, everyday assistance. Beauty technology took a scientific turn with L'Oreal's LED face mask prototype. The flexible silicone mask uses 630 nanometers red light and 830 nanometers near-infrared light, wavelengths known to support collagen production and skin repair. An integrated microcircuit controls exposure time and intensity to prevent overuse. Unlike rigid masks, this design conforms to facial contours for even treatment. Set for a 2027 launch, it represents skincare moving into regulated, data-driven wellness rather than cosmetic experimentation. Displays reached another milestone with the Samsung Z Trifold. Fully unfolded, it becomes a 10-inch tablet-sized screen. Despite the size, the device is just 12.9 millimeters thick when folded. A dual hinge system allows three apps to run side-by-side -side with no performance drop. Powered by the Snapdragon 8 Elite and paired with a 200 MP camera, the device focuses on productivity rather than novelty. This design shows foldables maturing into serious computing tools instead of experimental form factors. The show closed on a softer note with Ecovax Lil Milo, an emotional companion robot. Designed like a small animatronic dog, Lil Milo uses facial recognition and voice detection to interact naturally. Its charging station is shaped like a dog bed. When battery runs low, the robot crawls in and sleeps while charging wirelessly. This design avoids mechanical reminders of power and maintenance. Lil Milo highlights a growing trend at CES. Robots not just as tools, but as quiet, emotional fixtures in everyday spaces.